Americans for the Arts actually celebrates its 50th anniversary next year. Um, it was founded in 1960, and the idea behind it, the first Arts Council, the first copper, um, was uh, in 1947, mm -hmm. and a um, hundred or so of them existed in 1960. And so it came into existence as a national organization to try to do three things. It, it wanted to create an infrastructure for cultural advancement all across America, not just in big cities. And so it wanted to have more local arts agencies, and today we have 4,000 of them across the country. Wow. Um, and what they do is, uh, some of them are funders, some of them are service providers, some of them do cultural planning, but they are the, um, the motivators, the enablers behind um, helping there to be dance organizations and theater and music and, and, and so on. Um, so that was the first motivation. The second was to create a National Arts Council. So we're the organization that lobbied to create the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, which got created in 1965. And the third was to create a state arts council in every state. There were four state arts councils um, in 1960, and they were our members. Um, up, and this is the power of um, advocacy and the power of, of understanding how policy works. In the law that passed in 1965, creating the National Endowment for the Arts, there's a paragraph that we got in there uh, way before me um, that says any state that has a state arts council can get matching money from the federal government. So in 1964, there were four state arts councils. In 1966, there were 50 state arts councils. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the organization has focused for all these years <coughs> on trying to um, serve at the local level and advance at the national level. And, and in essence, that's still what our focus is. Um, and, and today, Americans for the Arts focuses on three areas. Um, the first, and I think probably the most important for the next 50 years, is building leadership. Um, the second is focusing on resources, money, which we've always done, and, and, and the third, which is equally important to the first, is creating a better value understanding, visibility for the value of the arts in America. Uh, we're, we had a number of conversations um, uh, beforehand here about how the arts are um, vibrant, successful, um, doing a great job in advancing and enabling communities to thrive, and yet are kept a secret. Mm -hmm. Probably the best kept secret mm -hmm. out there. Um, leaders don't know about those economic figures. They don't know about those advancements. They, they, they see and understand just um, you know, the, the entertainment value, let's say. So we need to do our third goal, a better job of creating that value proposition. But on the first one, on leaders, let me just say a word about that. Um, there are local organization leaders like everybody here, and we want to make them stronger and more of them and provide better services <coughs> like you said you, you received that were, were helpful to you here. Um, and uh, the, um, the second is about four years ago, we launched um, a, a real club-focused mechanism called the Americans for the Arts Action Fund. And that's a citizen membership piece. And the idea was, uh, could we get 100,000 citizens at the time to pay $20 to join. We've actually made it free since then. Well, we got 100,000 citizens to become members of the Action Fund, and what that means is that when we send out an alert at the federal level that says funding for the National Endowment for the Arts is up, it's on the House floor next week, will you email, and we, we, we put a, a, an email pre-done in advance, um, we're able to have, it allows a person to do what we call two-minute advocacy. They get this, they look at it, they push a button, it goes to the congressperson. 85,000 of them went in a, a one-week period when we were trying to get the economic recovery money. And boy, did it make a difference.